Hello and welcome everybody to my channel Omini Bio Entrance and today we will be discussing JNU PhD Entrance Examination conducted for the subject Life Science in the year 2021. So coming to the first question. Orthologs are defined as homologous sequences. So ortholog genes in uh, different species they derive from a common ancestor. So that they are called as orthologous genes. So, uh, in different species that share an ancestral gene, answer is option 1. Then next one, match bioinformatic programs with their application. Uh, blast P to compare protein query to a database of protein. Then that is option 4. Then blast N is for... Uh, to compare DNA strands of a DNA query against a DNA database, BLAST X is for to search a protein database using six frame translated protein sequences of the of a DNA sequence. And T BLAST 10 is to query a protein sequence against a DNA sequence database after six frame translation of a DNA sequence. So the answer is 4, uh, A4, B3, C2, D1. Then yes, I forgot to tell you one thing. I have not answered uh, uh, general science questions. That is from chemistry, physics and all. I have not answered those. I have answered only the biology questions. Okay, then coming to the next question. Which of the following species is responsible for uh, methemoglobinemia or blue baby syndrome it is nitrite nitrates answer is no3 minus then given below are two statements arabidopsis leaves are adaxial abaxially polarized trichomes and stomata are abundantly present in the adaxial and abaxial surface by uh, of arabidopsis leaves respectively in the light of the above statement choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below so answer both statements 1 and 2 are correct in arabidopsis thaliana zygotic embryo development involves multiple dynamic steps the development from zygote to mature embryo involves which of the major sequential steps <coughs> that is zygote Globular stage, then transition stage, heart shaped stage, torpedo or bent cotyledon and stage. Given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion A and the other is labeled as reason R. Assertion A. In Arabidopsis, quadruple mutants, sepalata 1 to 4, show a conversion of all four floral organs types into leaf-like structures. Then reason, reason, in Arabidopsis, sepalata 1 to 4 genes are redundantly involved and essential for floral organ development. So both A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. Answer is option 1. 4 independently insect resistant transgenic cotton plants have been developed by expressing a bacterial gene. Agrobacter through agrobacterium mediated plant transformation method using tDNA vector. Experimental methods for checking the copy number in transgenic plants may be. So, uh, so experimental method for checking copy number. So for co checking copy number you have to do southern blotting. For that answer option A, A will be enough. That is a DNA isolation followed by southern blotting. So, A only. Answer is option 2. Given below are two statements. Statement 1. Phloem loading and unloading at source and sink respectively establish pressure gradient. For statement 2. Flow of solution in the sieve element is driven by an osmotically generated pressure gradient. In the light of the above statement, choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below. So, answer is option 1, that is both statements 1 and 2 are correct. What do you expect to happen if a carotenoid deficient mutant plant is grown under normal sunlight? Now, 
Carotenoids, they protect the plant from photooxidative damage and also work as major component of light harvesting complex. So when the, when the carotenoid deficient mutant plant is grown under normal light condition, you can see increased chlorophyll oxidation and necrosis. Answer is option 3. Which of the following functions as a GA receptor? So GA insensitive dwarf 1, A only. A only will function as a gibberellic acid receptor. Then next one. Light mediated stomatal opening is largely regulated by the perception of. So it is by the perception of blue or UV light by uh, phototrophin. Answer is option 4. Then differential distribution and intercellular movement of which plant hormone is mainly attributed to the vascular development. So it is auxin. Answer is option 3. Then given below are two statements. A plant that is infected once by a pathogen become resistant to subsequent infections. Plants contain dedicated immune cells for retaining infection memory. So statement 1 only is correct whereas statement 2 is not correct. So answer is option 4. Given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion A and the other is labeled as reason R. Assertion A. Under light phytochrome mutants show longer hypocotyls than the wild type plants. Light suppresses hypocotyl growth and phytochrome is required for the process. In the light of the above statement, choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below. So both A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. Then next one. Given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion and the other is labeled as reason. Assertion. Cleaved amplified polymorphic sequence markers. CAPS marker distinguishes homozygous parents as well as F1 progeny. So it is a co-dominant marker. That is why it is able to recognize homozygous parents as well as F1 progeny will be heterozygote. So it recognizes heterozygote also. So CAPS is a co-dominant marker. So in the light of the above statement, choose the most appropriate answer from the options. Both A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. That is correct. Mature sieve elements lack several structures that are normally found in living cells. Identify such structures from the options given below. So sieve elements, they are semi-alive at maturity and they lose their nucleus and other organelles but retain the endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria and plastids. So the answer is option 4 that is A and B only. Nuclei and tonoplast. A purified circular plasmid DNA sample was cut with two restriction enzymes RE1 and RE2 and resolved on an agarose gel. The following results were observed. Sample cut with RE1 gave 2.8 kb and 2.2 kb bands. So RE1 if you cut it you got two bands. One is 2.8 kb that is this one. One minute. That is this one. RE1 gave uh, 2.8 kb band and a, a 2.2 kb band this band. Sample cut with RE2. RE2 is having only a single restriction site. That is why you got 5 kb band. The whole size of this circular uh, plasmid is 5 kb. And sample cut with both RE1 and RE2 gave 3 bands. So 1, 1.2 and 2.8 kb band showing that RE1 has got 2 restriction enzyme sites and RE2 cuts within the uh, RE1 RE cut fragment. So RE2 is having only a single restriction digestion site and two sites are there for RE1. So the answer here will be 
two sides for RE1 and one side for RE2. Answer is option 3. Which of the following methods can be used for targeted genome editing in plants? So it is answer is A and B only. That is CRISPR-Cas9 based method and TALEN method. Answer is option 2. Development of transgenic plant through regeneration based methods involves multiple steps. The sequence of which are as follows. Identify the correct one. So if you see the third option, cloning of uh, gene of interest in binary vector, transfer of DNA to plant, regeneration and selection of transgenic plants, molecular confirmation of transgenic plants. Answer is option 3. Then next one, which of the following plant viruses are known to replicate in nuclei? So it is tobacco mosaic virus and cauliflower mosaic virus. Answer is option 3. 2. Tobacco leaf curl virus and cauliflower mosaic virus. The next one. Which of the following statements result related to transcription are true? In outbred populations, an individual is more likely to be histocompatible with one of its parents than with its sibling. So, outbred means bred from parents not closely related. So, the offspring of heterozygous parents inherit one MHC haplotype from each parent and they thus will express some molecules that differ from those of each parent. So the offspring of such heterozygous parents, they inherit one MHC haplotype from father and the mother and also they will express some molecules that differ from those of each parent. Parents and offsprings are histocompatible. In contrast, siblings have siblings of these parents they will have uh, one fourth chance of being histocompatible. Then next option that rejection of an allogenic allograft mainly involves hyperacute rejection mediated by antibodies to alloantigens. So allogenic means between unrelated individuals. When grafted between unrelated individuals the graft is initially accepted but is then rejected about 10 to 30 days after grafting. The response is called as first set rejection and is quite consistent. It depends on a T cell response in the recipient. Now they have given it as hyperacute rejection. Now what is hyperacute rejection? It occurs a few minutes after the transplant when the antigens are completely unmatched. But that is not the case. Rejection of an allograft is mainly due to uh, first set rejection and it is a T cell response. Then option 4 if you see all graphs. Wait, okay, I will see second uh, set rejection is manifestation of immunologic memory. Yes, that is correct. And uh, so, uh, all allografts between individuals with identical HLA haplotypes will be accepted. They will be not be accepted because... HLA typing is imprecise owing to the uh, polymorphism and complexity of the human MHC. Then unrelated individuals, that is in the case of allograft, whose, uh, who, who type as HLA identical, rarely have identical MHC genotypes. And option E, that is cytokine produced by host TH cells activated in response to alloantigens play a major role in graft rejection and that is also correct. So only C and E are correct. So answer is option 4. You have isolated nave T cells from your own blood and want to polarize them to the Th1 lineage in vitro. Pol polarize means either the, these nave T cells they will become uh, Th1 or Th2 cells. That is called as polarization. Which among the following reagents would be the most appropriate to do this? So out of these, uh, answer will be option 2. That is anti-TCR antibody, interleukin-12 and uh, anti-CD8 antibody. If you have interleukin-12, then they will drive the nave cells to become Th1 cells. So answer will be option 2. 
Then next one. Which of the following mediators of extravasation in column 1 with their interacting partners in column 2? So CXCLA that is G protein coupled receptor. CD11A, CD18 is uh, ICAM1. PSGL1 is P selectin and GLYCAM1 is uh, L selectin. So the answer here is A3, B4, C1, D2. Option 3. Uh, match the antimicrobial compound with their respective mode of action. Cephalosporin, target cell wall biosynthesis. Tetracycline, they are targeting protein synthesis. Quinolone is uh, targeting DNA synthesis and rifampicin is targeting transcription. So the answer here is option 4 that is A3, B4, C2, D1. This was a very easy match the following. Okay. Auto inducer of which of the following bacteria freely diffuses in and out of the cell? Choose the correct answer from the options given below. So auto inducers they are signaling molecules that are produced in response to damages in cell population density. Uh, not damages, changes in cell population density. As the density of the curing sensing bacterial uh, cell increases, so does the concentration of the autoinducer also. And autoinducer that diffuse freely are produced by gram-negative bacteria. So out of these, which are the gram-negative bacteria? That is B, that is Pseudomonas aeruginosa and uh, Vibrio fishery. They are gram-negative bacteria so the answer is b and e only whereas the other are gram positive bacteria then next one given below are two statements curum sensing is a mechanism of cell cell communication in bacteria statement 2 every bacterium can sense other bacteria without any species barrier in the light of the above statement choose the correct answer from the options given below so answer is uh, statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. Answer is option 4. Binding of a chemokine to a cell surface receptor results in cellular movement along the chemokine gradient. The chemokine receptor dash. It is a G protein coupled receptor. Answer is option 1. Given below are two statements. Ligand gated CA2 plus channel on endoplasmic reticulum is operated by binding to PIP2. Not PIP2, it is IP3. Uh, statement 2. CA2 plus released from endoplasmic reticulum activate protein kinase B. So it is not protein kinase B, it is protein kinase uh, C. <coughs> So both statement 1 and 2 are false. Answer is option 2. Then which of the following characteristic features are exhibited by RAS? RAS is a proto-oncogene. Choose the correct answer from the options given below. Okay. Uh, RAS is a proto-oncogene. Yes, it is activated by G protein coupled receptor. Yes. RAS is a transducer protein. Yes, it has GTP activity. Yes, RAS has ATP binding site. It is not ATP binding. It is a GTP binding protein. So E is not the correct answer. So A, B, C, D will be the uh, only will be the answer. That is option four is the match the type of genes listed with respective elements. Caretaker, tumor suppressor, gatekeeper, tumor suppressor. Now gatekeeper uh, keepers they directly inhibit tumor growth or promote tumor death. So inactivation of these genes contribute directly to the cancer formation and progression. And caretakers are genes involved in maintaining genetic stability and minimizing the rate at which mutations occur to the gatekeepers. So uh, first one a caretaker tumor suppressor gene that is BRCA1. Gatekeeper tumor suppressor gene that is P53, proto oncogene NMIC and oncogene BSRC. So the option is uh, A1, B2, C3, D4, option 2. Then the following statements indicate the viruses and their association with cancer in humans. Papilloma virus is a DNA virus. 
it's a dna virus associated with the uterine and cervix carcinoma that's correct epstein barr virus is an rn is a rna virus it is not rna virus it is dna virus so it, that is wrong hepatitis c virus is a dna virus it is not dna virus it is an rna virus so c is also not correct then next one hepatitis b virus is a dna virus associated with hepatocellular carcinoma yes human t cell leukemia virus is an rna virus associated with lymphomas that is also correct so answer will be a d and e only then match the microorganism with the diseases plasmodium vivax is malaria a2 leishmania donovani is kala azar wauchiria malayi is filariasis and hemophilus influenza is pneumonia very easy so it is a2 uh, b3 c1 and d4 answer is option 2 coming to the next question lactose fermenting streptomycin sensitive e coli culture was subjected to mutagenesis by nitrosoguanidine treatment during growth in lb broth after 24 hour incubation tenfold serial dilution was made and plated on the lb agar plates were incubated at 37 degrees celsius for 24 hours A plate giving 225 well isolated colonies was to be processed to know whether or not there exist lactose non fermenting and streptomycin resistant mutants which of the following methods would be best that will address this query so it will be replica plating first you have got the master plate where you have plated after mutation then the, there will be because all the colonies will not be streptomycin resistant colonies you get after transformation after mutation okay and all the colonies will not be lactose non fermenting also so then you take a sterile velvet block then imprint of the colonies will be taken on the sterile velvet cloth then you replicate uh, replicate onto fresh media that is you have two different medias one that lacks streptomycin and the other streptomycin containing so the one which lacks streptomycin if you incubate you will get all the colonies as that are seen on the master plate but the one uh, which has streptomycin only those carrying the streptomycin resistant gene or those which are streptomycin resistant mutants they will only be growing if you compare these two plates you can see that these two col the two colonies that i have marked showing it as streptomycin sensitive colonies and the other three are streptomycin resistant colonies in this way you can select for um, after replica plating method for mutants so the answer here is option 1 that is replica plating then next one what are the main advantages of using indirect elisa method So in indirect melisa method antigen is coated onto the wells then primary antibody is added and incubated followed by secondary antibody conjugated with enzyme is added and incubated then the substrate is added and color develops So what are the main advantages of using indirect method it amplifies the signal yes it prevents wastage of expensive primary antibody during labeling yes same labeled secondary antibody can be used to detect many primary antibody serum sample yes it blocks non specific protein binding sites on the plate no so the answer is uh, a b and c only answer is option 3 then why is it important to use an unstained control in an immuno phenotyping experiment by flow cytometry Uh, that is to detect auto fluorescence or background staining innate to cells of interest answer is option 1 then some techniques are mentioned below fluorescence resonance energy transfer bifc by fluorescence complementation assay fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching and yeast to hybrid assay choose the most appropriate techniques that are used for fluorescence based protein interaction studies 
So FRP, FRAP, FRAP, that is fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching, was uh, first used to analyze the mobility of individual lipid molecules within a cell membrane. And uh, FRAP is also used to study protein dynamics. Then, uh, <clears throat> So, FRAP is not used for um, fluorescence based protein interaction studies. Then, yeast hybrid system is based on protein interaction in yeast proteins uh, in the system are interaction. Yes, one minute. Okay, yeast to hybrid system methods are based on protein interaction. And interaction between two protein activates reporter genes that enable growth of a certain growth on a certain medium or a color change so there also you don't use fluorescent based protein interaction studies so the answer here will be a and b that is fret and bifc answer is a and b only so answer is option two next Sephiros beads were incubated with P53 antibody overnight. Whole cell extract was added to it and further incubated for 8 hours. To find which proteins are interacting with P53 following experiments were suggested to complete the whole process. Northern blotting, SDS page, western blotting, southwestern blotting. Which of the following experiments will bring out the correct outcome? So it is option uh, B, uh, B and C only, that is SDS page and western blotting. Answer will be option 3, B and C only. Then match list 1, epistatsis type with list 2 phenotypic ratio. Uh, A3, that 9 is to, it was a C, which 9 is to 3 is to 4. Uh, dominant is 12 is to for 3 is to 1. Duplicate recessive is 9 is to 7 and duplicate dominant is 15 is to 1. So the answer will be option 2 that is A3, B1, C4, D2. The next one. Match list 1 syndrome disease with list 2 chromosomal aberration. Parder willi syndrome uh, is um, uniparental disomy. Turner syndrome is X chromosome non-disjunction. Down syndrome is translocation. And sickle cell anemia is point mutation. So answer will be option 3 that is uh, A2, B4, C1, D3. Then given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion A and the other is labeled as reason R. Assertion A. A woman who has normal vision is married to a color blind man. All her sons and daughters have normal vision. Some recessive X chromosome from mother and mother is homozygous for normal vision. So even daughters have normal vision. In the light of the above statement, choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below. Now... Uh, if they have only told the woman has normal vision. She can be either a homozygous normal vision or a heterozygous condition that is carrier for color blindness. If she is carrier, then uh, you will get um, infected daughters also if she is a carrier because the man uh, to whom she is married is already color blind. But if she is not color blind, that is this case you will get all children normal vision. That is even the uh, females will be normal vision because they will get only the colorblind X genotype from the father only. Mother is normal. So, some recessive X chromosome from mother and, uh, and mother is homozygous for normal vision. So, even daughters have normal vision. So, if mother is homozygous, daughters also will be normal vision. But if she is heterozygous, then daughters will be colorblind. So the answer here is both A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. Answer is option 1. Then given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion and the other is labeled as uh, reason. Assertion. VE mutants have smaller cell size than wild type. Now what is this VEE1? It is a, a nuclear protein involved in the regulation of the G2M checkpoint. 
and VE1 what it does is it will phosphorylate CDC2 at tyrosine 15 and this results in the inactivation of the CDC2 cyclin B complex and hence preventing entry into mitosis. Now since VE1 inhibits entry into mitosis, its absence will lead to division at a premature stage and smaller size cells will be formed. Then CDC2 protein is unphosphorylated in VE1 mutants leading to continuous cell division. That is correct. And so both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. Then you have to radio label the following DNA fragment with 3 prime protruding end as shown below. Which of the following combinations would be used? So it will be T4 DNA polymerase and alpha P32 DCTP. Answer is option 4. Then the following statements with respect to sea urchin development are mentioned below. The large micromeres are autos, uh, autonomously specified. Shortly after the hatching of blastula, the descendants of the large micromeres undergo epithelial to mesenchymal transition. All cells of the blastula are connected on, on their outer surface to the basal lamina and on their inner surface to a hyaline layer. The small micromeres become skeleton of the larva and large micromeres contribute to the uh, coelomic pouches and germ cells of the adult. Which one of the following options has all the correct statements? So A and B, option 2, A and B only. That is the correct statement. Then match the list terminology with the list 2. Capacitation, that is the final stages of sperm maturation. Compaction, cell addition proteins like E. cadherin is expressed and blastomeres gradually huddle together to form a compact ball of cell. Cavitation, uh, the trophoblast cell secrete fluid into morula to create a blastocele. And competence, the ability to respond to specific inductive signal. So the answer here is option 3 that is A3, B1, C4 and D2. The next one. If the telomerase enzyme is mutated and non-functional, which of the following is expected to happen as a direct consequence? So the chromosome would shorten with each new generation. Answer is option 4. During DNA replication, the primase enzyme synthesizes a stretch of so it synthesizes a stretch of RNA at the beginning of every Okazaki fragment. Then next one, peptidyl transferase. Peptidyl transferase formation of peptide bonds, puromycin causing premature chain termination by acting as an analog of amino acid tRNA, streptomycin uh, binding to the 30S subunit and inhibiting the binding of amino acid tRNAs, amino acid tRNA synthetase covalently linking an amino acid to its cognate RNA. So the answer here is option 2 that is a4, B3, C2, D1. Then which of the following histone modification is associated with heterochromatin formation and gene silencing? So that is uh, histone methylation. It has important role on the assembly of the heterochromatin mechanism. So the answer is option 1. Uh, histone 3, trimethyl lysine 9. Then next one. In eukaryotic cell, a poly A tail is normally added to pre-mRNA molecules but not to rRNA or tRNA. A recombinant molecule has been created wherein a protein coding gene that is normally transcribed by RNA polymerase 2 is fused to the promoter of rRNA which is transcribed by RNA polymerase 1. The, this hybrid gene was subsequently transcribed by RNA polymerase 1 and appropriate Transcript lacked a poly A tail. Which of the following is or are the correct statement based on the experiment reported above? So here what they have done is they have fused a protein coding gene with the promoter of an rRNA. And this gene was transcribed by RNA polymerase 1. So what will be the outcome they have asked? So, pre-mRNA cleavage is a prerequisite for poly A addition. That is important because it is uh, essential in almost all eukaryotes. Almost all protein coding transcripts in eukaryotes. So, it is essential and uh, uh, 
and pre mrna cleavage and polyadenylation machinery is co transcriptionally recruited by the rna polymerase 2 the uh, here rna polymerase 1 only they have uh, used for transcribing but you need rna polymerase 2 and pre mrna cleavage is prerequisite for poly a addition so answer is option a and c only option 4 is the answer then molecular chaperone match the following molecular chaperone protein that help other proteins fold correctly nonsense mediated mrna decay surveillance system that eliminates defective mrnas in cytoplasm anticodon sequence of three nucleotides in trna that is complementary to sequence in mrna and proteosome large protein complex with proteolytic activity that is responsible for degrading proteins marked for destruction so the answer here is option 3 that is A2, B4, C3 and D1. Answer is option 3. Given below are two statements. In the lambda phage vectors, the central part of the phage lambda genome is altered by the removal of a cluster of genes so that a large insert can be cloned. The segment of the lambda genome deleted governs lysogenic growth compelling it to form lytic plaques for screening. Both statements are correct. Answer is option 1. Then multi-TOF mass spectrophotometry is used for the identification of intact mass of peptides and of molecular masses maximum up to 2000 Daltons. That is not correct. Uh, ESI MS MS mass spectrophotometry is used for de novo sequencing of peptides. Statement 2 is uh, correct. So, answer will be statement 1 is incorrect, but statement 2 is correct. Then, next one given below are two statements. Statement 1. Microarray technology cannot be adopted to identify genome-wide splicing events. It can be detected. So, statement 1 is not correct. Statement 2. RNA sequence can be used for identifying unannotated novel transcripts. Statement 2 is correct. So, in the light of the above statements, uh, what will be the correct answer from the option? So, both, so statement 1 is incorrect, but statement 2 is true. Answer is option 4. Given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion and the other is labeled as reason. Assertion A. The white gene in Rosophila controls eye pigment production, whereas the normal eye color of fly is red. Some flies, despite having normal white plus gene, show white patches in the eye. Rare common inversion in some flies cause placement of the white plus gene into heterochromatic region. That is correct. So both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation for A. So that, that is also correct. Then next one. Given below are two statements. One is labeled assertion, other is reason. Anti anterograde amnesia can be caused by chronic alcoholism which primarily damages the mammalian bodies. It can also be produced by bilateral damage to the medial temporal lobes. Then reason. The ability of the brain to consolidate short term memories into long term memories is altered in the patient suffering from anterior grade amnesia. In the light of the above statement, choose the correct answer from the options given below. So both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. That is the answer. Then given below are two statements. Our ancestors tend to go to sleep when the sun set and wake up when it rose. Our, once our ancestors learned how to generate and control fire, their daily schedule with sunset and rise changed. Statement 2. In the modern world with the development of chief and effective electricity, human adopted the habit of staying up late for several hours after sunset. Considering our biological clock and neural mechanism has evolved long ago, Changes in the daily rhythm have not affected our physical and cognitive ability. In the light of the above statement, choose the most appropriate from the options given below. So, extended period of this abnormal light exposure can result in circadian disruption, which has been implicated in changes in metabolism, sleep and cognition, as well as 
increasing risk of metabolic and cardiovascular diseases so you cannot uh, con considering our biological clock and st in statement 2 considering our biological clock and neural mechanism changes in the daily rhythm have not affected our physical and cognitive ability is not correct they have affected so statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect answer is option 3 then the two cerebral hemispheres perform different functions but our perceptions and memories are unified this unity is accomplished by corpus callosum. So answer is option 1 that is B only. Then unipolar neurons. Uh, they transmit sensory information from the environment to the central nervous system. Bipolar neurons transmit signals in the sensory system and Schwann cells produce myelin. So the answer here is option 2 that is A2, B3, C1. The following photomicrographs show a normal and lesioned hippocampus of the uh, rat brain. Lesion was made by using microinjection of neurotoxin. Arrowheads show areas where neurons were damaged. Which of the following groups of toxins may have caused neuronal damage? So the answer here is option 4 that is canic acid, glutamate and ibotenic acid. Then which of the following is an invasive method to study the brain and its dysfunction in animal model? So it is optical imaging. Answer is option 3. Following statements are made for electron microscopy. Stains for electron uh, microscopy are salt of heavy metals. That is correct. <coughs> Photographs of electron microscopy appear dark. Yes, tissue specimens are generally fixed in 10% formaldehyde. It is not 10%, it is 4% formaldehyde or 10% formalin. So C is not correct. Specimens must be held in vacuum during imaging. That is also correct. So A, B, D are only correct. So the answer is option 2. Then next one. In histopathological technique, tissue fixation with formaldehyde causes cell death and immobilize cell constituents. Yes. Facilitate cross-linking between amino groups of proteins with covalent bonds. Yes. Causes swell cell swelling. It doesn't cause cell swelling. Turns the cell into live-like appearance. So here also A, B, D are correct. Answer is option 1. Then norepinephrine, norepinephrine beta receptor, acetylcholine, uh, M1, M3, M5 receptors, GABA, inhibitory synapse and glutamate, MGLUR2 receptor. So the answer is option 4, A3, B4, C1, D2. Then... <clears throat> Asthma is characterized by episodic or chronic wheezing, cough and feeling of tightness in the chest as a result of bronchoconstriction. Three airway abnormalities, airway obstruction, airway inflammation and airway hyperresponsiveness are usually observed. Statement 2. Inhaled and systemic steroids are used even in mild to moderate cases of asthma to reduce airway inflammation. In the light of the above statement, choose the correct answer from the options given below. Both statements 1 and 2 are correct. Answer is option 1. Then Starling law of the heart. Starling law of the heart explains the increase in heart rate produced by exercise does not operate during exercise. Explain the increase in cardiac output that occurs when Venous return is increased. That is correct. Option 2 is correct. Does not operate in the failing heart. No. Okay, then next one. Match the organism with respective group list. Jawless fish, agnatha, acidian tadpole, herdmania, eurostyle, frog, skates, fishes. Answer is option 3. A2, B4, C1, D3. Then next one. Given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion A and the other is labeled as reason R. As a, when giraffe bends down to drink water, the head goes from being several meters above the heart to several meters below it. 
The resulting increase in the hydrostatic pressure in the head could cause blood to pool in the veins. It may potentially cause edema in the tissues of the head which would be life threatening. So that is correct. Then R. The giraffe has an intricate network of highly elastic blood vessel near the brain that act as a pressure reservoir. It expands to accommodate excess blood when the head is lowered. It prevents the blood from pooling in the venous system. That is also correct and that is the correct explanation of A. So both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. Option 1. The next one. The contraction response of the skeletal muscle uh, produces more contractile tension than when muscle contracts isometrically than isotonically. Next one. In salt, cro water, crocodile, salt secreting cells are present on the tongue. Answer is option 1. Which among, uh, among the following photopigments is found in some of the retinal ganglionic cells in the eye? It is melanopsin. Answer is option 2. Then given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion A and the other is labeled as reason R. Carbon monoxide poisoning is toxic because it reacts with hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin and carboxyhemoglobin does not take up oxygen. And that is correct. Carbon monoxide poisoning is often listed as a form of anemic hypoxia because the amount of hemoglobin that can carry oxygen is reduced but the total hemoglobin content in the blood remains unaffected. That is also correct but it is not the correct reason for A. So both A and R are true but R is not the correct explanation of A. Answer is option 2. The term that is not associated with the tRNA structure. Acceptor rum, clover leaf, pseudouridine, thymidine, monophosphate. Thymidine monophosphate is the answer. In glycolytic pathway, the enzyme that catalyzes irreversible reaction is out of this it is pyruvate kinase. Answer is option 3. Then next one. During an electron transport in the mitochondria, protons are pumped out from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space creating the proton motive force. Dinitrophenol destroys the proton motive force and thus it inhibits ATP synthesis. So both statements 1 and 2 are true. Then match the following. Acetyl-CoA TCA cycle Succinyl-CoA TCA cycle so, okay, out of this, uh, A and B, 1. That is the correct option. Uh, match the correct combination from the options given below. So, out of this, A and B, 1. 2 is the right answer. The reagent that is used for the determination of the N-terminal amino acid by Edman degradation method is, it is phenyl isothiocyanate. Which would be the predominant form of glycine in this glycine buffer <coughs> at pH 10? So at high pH, it will be the anionic form, uh, glycinate anion. So it will be uh, NH2CH2COO minus, NH2CH2COO minus, option. Then given below are two statements. The globin domain generally contain eight helices and binds to the heme group. Statement 2, the globin domain is generally stabilized on the internal core by beta sheets. Now, if you take uh, hemoglobin and myoglobin, they do not contain beta sheets. So, naturally, statement 2 is incorrect, whereas statement 1 is correct. So, answer is state uh, option 3. Statement 1 is correct, but statement 2 is incorrect. Then, next one. To solve the protein structure by NMR spectroscopy, some of the following isotopes are incorporated into the protein structure. Identify the most commonly used isotopes from the following options. So C13, N15, O17, C12 and N14. So all nuclei with odd number of protons and with odd number of neutrons show magnetic properties required for NMR. But nuclei with even number of both protons and neutrons do not have the required magnetic properties. So, out of this, option D, that is C12, 
it has got six protons and six neutrons so it will not uh, show the magnetic properties required by nmr so wherever option d is present that option is not correct so two three four are not correct only one that is a and b only are correct ef hand motifs is in protein generally binds to which of the following ions it binds to ca2 plus ions then coiled coil motif in protein structure generally have dash amino acid repeats so it has uh, seven amino acid repeats coiled coiled motif then given below are two statements statement one generally anti parallel beta sheets are more stable than the parallel beta sheets because hydrogen bonds are longer and there are a greater number of hydrogen bonds statement two generally anti parallel beta sheets are more stable than the parallel beta sheet because hydrogen bonds are shorter and linear statement one is incorrect but statement two is correct answer is option some common analytical methods are mentioned below thin layer chromatography is used for identifying lipids yes agarose gel is used for separating carbohydrates no sds page is used for separating proteins yes hplc is used for separating plasmids no so i would choose the correct statement from the option given below a and c only answer is option 2 then given below are two statements one is labeled as assertion a and the other is labeled as assertion as reason so assertion a in sds polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis proteins are separated on the number of amino acids in their primary structure mostly independent of their charges yes this is because sds destroys the secondary structure of the proteins and confers a uniform negative charge on each amino acid residue yes so both a and r are correct and r is the correct explanation of a consider the following three peptides so they have given three peptides and peptide 1 will elute followed by peptide 3 and peptide 2 on gel filtration chromatography so peptide 1 will elute first yes in gel elect, uh, gel uh, filtration chromatography the larger one with having larger molecular mass will elute out first followed by the next larger one that is peptide 3 then followed by peptide 2 so the option uh, a is correct then peptide 1 can be separated from other peptides using cation exchange chromatography peptide 1 peptide 1 that is this one it is having uh, more of glutamic acid and aspartic acid so it will be negatively charged and can be separated using anion exchange chromatography so here if you see you can see more of d and e coming over here that is aspartic acid and glutamic acid Uh, d d e then again d d then e e d so it is natural it is a negatively charged peptide and can be separated using anion exchange chromatography not cation exchange chromatography it is anion exchange chromatography e will be correct then peptide 2 can be separated from other peptides using cation exchange chromatography Peptide 2 is having more of lysine and arginine that is K and R if you see peptide 2 it is having so many K and R so it is naturally positively charged and can be separated using cation exchange chromatography so C is correct E is correct what about D peptide 1 will elute first followed by peptide 2 not peptide 2 followed by peptide 3 then peptide 2 on gel filtration chromatography so D is also not correct the one which is correct is A C and E only so answer is option 2 the next one after performing a thin layer chromatographic experiment a researcher determines the rf value of a component as 0.5 if the solvent traveled a distance of 4 cm on the plate what can you conclude about the distance traveled by the component so rf value is given by the formula distance traveled by the compound divided by distance traveled by the solvent they have given the rf value and the distance traveled by the solvent now you have to calculate the distance traveled by the compound so substitute in the formula and you will get answer as 2 cm so it is 
Option 3, that is the right answer. Then considering the above double reciprocal plot for an enzyme activity, what would be the Vmax and Km values for the curve C? So this is the double reciprocal plot and uh, if you see it at uh, this, this point, that is where 2 is written. This is called the v, 1 by Vmax and this is the 1 by Km values minus 1 by km values minus 1 by km values and this is the 1 by vmax value so they have given us they have asked for the curve c this one so uh, minus 1 by km is minus 1 and km will be 1 and 1 by vmax is 2 so 1 by vmax will be equal to 2 and vmax will be 1 by 2 that is 0.5 so the answer will be option uh, 1 that is 0.5 and 1 so thank you for watching my channel please do like share and subscribe thank you